Okay, we okay, we are live and we're going to start this in two seconds. Well, good evening, everybody. Kufar Akbar. Of course, it is another edition of the Cross and the Crescent Discussion Group. We are live here on Blog Talk Radio every Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time and Sunday afternoons from 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we generally go for about two hours on Sundays and try to keep it to about an hour and a half on Tuesdays, but sometimes we just can't help ourselves and we go a little bit longer. Uh, Tonight, we have a topic that uh, we were trying to continue from Sunday, but I've been watching the chat, and it seems like some of the people that would be most objectionable uh, to this topic or want to input uh, opposing views, perspectives, have kind of bowed out for some reason. So we'll... We'll just do the best that we can. I appreciate everybody coming tonight. Uh, I have a slideshow that I want to present. So you're going to have to bear with me. It's pretty comprehensive, but I guess I should say what the topic is first, right? That, that would help. Yeah. All right. So well, tonight we're going to be do, uh, talking about, uh, does Israel have a right to the Holy Land? Do they have a right to claim uh, what they have today as their homeland, as their country? And do they have the right to defend it? And if they do have the right to defend it, by which means do they have the right uh, to defend it? So we're going to be getting into we're going to be getting into some scripture. We're going to be getting into some current events. We're going to be getting into some quasi legal issues, and uh, uh, try to figure out why people so staunchly back the establishment of and preservation of the Jewish people in their homeland in Israel. And why that is not only from a legal perspective important, but also from a religious perspective, why that is important uh, for us to, uh, to support. So let me get over here. And does anybody anything to they want to chime in with before we get going on this? Because this, like I said, this is going to take me some time here uh, to do this. I still got a little bit of a so, sniffle. So my going thoughts on. after I, I got a preview of this, and and my thoughts are if you have a child at home, and they are taking ninth grade or tenth grade, uh, you history, uh, social studies, you you really would like for them to watch this. Um, this presentation is professional. It's well done, and that's from my perspective as a former social studies teacher. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. We, I, I, and the thing is, is that, oh, here, also, let me just say this. If you w do want a copy of this, all you have to do is just email me at Eric Thekafer, Eric the Kaffer, spelled K-A-F-I-R at gmail.com. And I'll be more than happy to send you a copy, um, a copy of this slideshow. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I made a mistake. Whoops, 
I didn't mean to do that. I made a mistake already. I made the mistake of letting my cat in right before the show started. She was sitting out here on the windowsill looking at me and meowing. I thought, okay, I'll have some mercy on it because it's pretty cold outside. So I let him in, and now he's, all he's doing is rubbing up against my feet, trying to get me to pet him. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but he's also meowing at me. Okay, so uh, we're going to be talking about Israel and its history and uh, why they have a, a legal claim to the land and what is being done to keep them from staying in uh, the Holy Land today. And this was one of the, uh, the uh, topics of contention on Saturday. Uh, when we started talking about anti-Semitism, when we started talking about the anti-Semitic attacks that, that had occurred in Texas, um, uh, what was that, Saturday evening? Does anybody, had, has anybody heard if they've captured, or what, uh, not what if they captured, but what, why they arrested those two jokers over in England for? Did anybody hear what, why, why that was? They had a connection. There was a, there was a correlation between the, the guy they caught here, the guy that, did the um that took hostages in mm -hmm. at the, the synagogue in Texas was a British national. Right. And he had connections to people over there that they felt were terror related. Okay, but we don't know the extent of that, just the fact that there was a relationship between the two of them. Is yes. Uh, okay. and they that was enough for them to con the apparently they were just looking for a cause. Okay. Well, I was. I just. I just didn't know if something had com come into the news today or popped out in the news today because I, I, I went in and looked and I didn't anything see anything. I'm. I'm watching actually. So, well, I'll let you know when I see it. Okay. All right. Let's jump back over here to uh, the slideshow. Okay. So when we look at Israel today, uh, we're going to look at who has a right to the Holy Land. What evidence do we have for this? And why is there conflict over this? And as Christians, and I'm assuming everybody here in our uh, well, I don't know everybody. I'm assuming in chat and in uh, on the panel, of course, are Christians. Uh, what, why or what we can do uh, to support uh, Israel itself? Now, when we look at Israel, Israel's uh, possession—not not occupation, but possession of their rightful homeland—and you hear the consternation of Muslim majority countries or people of the Islamic faith themselves saying that Israel has no right to that. It's an Islamic land. Well, if you look at the Islamically held lands in that region, and this doesn't even include, if you go up, up here, I mean, this doesn't include Turkey. and doesn't include <laughs> the stands over here. Uh, here. Here's how much they have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right there. Just that little sliver right there. But yet this uh, possession of this land by the Jews today drives the entire Islamic world nutso. Now, today that would be kind of an antiquated way to describe it, actually, because there's being there, there the, the Palestinians, in my my opinion, have essentially wore out their welcome in the Arab world or the Muslim world because they've been offered so many opportunities for autonomy and self rule, but they keep on blowing it, like you know, electing terrorist organizations to rule over them. But let's take a look at this from a biblical perspective. Let's start with Abraham and how Abraham was given the land by God. God called him out of the land of Ur and says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will bless those who bless you. Now, this is in the book of Genesis. And then he establishes a covenant with Abraham. And we all know the story in uh, chapter 15 of the book of Genesis, where he uh, has Abraham come in and sacrifice a heifer, a goat, a ram, turtle dove, and pigeons. And then God himself comes in and he is the one that establishes the covenant by he has Abraham fall into a deep sleep. And in the process is this God who walks between there establishing the covenant for himself between him and Abraham. And it notice it says here, to your offspring, I give you this land. Well, the question then becomes, who is Abraham's offspring? Well, it says here, to your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So the question then becomes, is this, uh oh, somebody was here and popped out, popped in. Uh, who is Abraham's offspring? So let's look at Genesis 26, 5. 26, 5, this is, pertains to 
to Isaac. This is specifically pointing out Isaac. This has nothing to do with Ishmael. And if you look down here in verse 4, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and will give your offspring all of these lands. Whose offsprings? Isaac's. It is not, this This does not uh, mention Ishmael at all. I need to take something off here. Hold on just a second. Uh, there, because I want to make sure everybody can see uh, the slides. Everybody knows where the Cross and the Crescent dot. Oh, by the way, go over to crossandthecrescent.com. Um, that is the website that we have. Uh, we're going to be doing some uh, some upgrades over there. and uh, But uh, all of the videos are accessible there. Or, of course, go to Cross and Crescent uh, YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, click the bell. And there is something else that goes with that. Like, subscribe, click the bell. <sighs> Share. There you go. Share. Okay. Uh, so here we have the covenant of God being given to Isaac, not Ishmael. Ishmael was blessed by God, but not, uh, not the covenant was not passed to him. Now, here it is now given from Isaac. It is given to Jacob, not Esau. It is given to Jacob. So here in Genesis 46, uh, 1 through 4, Jacob is given the land. Now, look what happens here in 23. Um, uh, Chapter 20, I'm sorry, 24, verses 3, 4, and 7. Here you have the Mose, what we call the Mosaic Covenant. The Mosaic Covenant is, co is, come, is passed through Jacob to the 12 tribes of Israel. They're taken into bondage. Uh, so there's a 400 period uh, from Jacob to Moses. And now Moses brings them out of the promised land and establishes a new covenant with them in the Sinai. And here... Um, in the book of Genesis, you have the, the covenant being passed from Abraham through Isaac to Jacob. Now it's the Mosaic covenant, which is the 12 tribes. Does this have anything to do with Ishmael? Very no. good. No, it does not. Exactly. And so if you look at here, then he took, look at here. What book did he take? Oh, he took the book of the covenant, by goodness. And read it, and hearing the people, he said, all the Lord has spoken, we will do. And that it was the covenant that they made with, with God. Now, Ishmael was made a promise by God. This is true. He was made a promise, but he was not granted that covenantal relationship that God shares with the Jewish people. And look what he also says. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac. Not with you, Ishmael, but with Isaac. So when they say that God, you know, we have a covenantal right to the Holy Land, no, you do not. You do not. If you do, then you're going to have to demonstrate it. And I'm going to, I'm fixing a little Southern lingo for you there. I'm getting ready to show you how your, even your own book says that you do not have a right to that land. Get to Genesis 25, and it says, uh, this is the uh, blessing that God gave to Ishmael. He says, I will give you 12 tribes, 12 sons, 12 sons will make great nations. And they have, there were, there were great nations that came out of that. Now, we don't know if that has anything to do with Muhammad and his lineage, because that lineage itself is just a big hot mess. But let's just forget that little uh, tidbit for right now. Now, let's go to, hold on, let me bring this back up here, sorry. Now let's jump over to what the Quran teaches. This is what the Quran teaches. Quran says in chapter 2, verse 20, it says, O children of Israel, remember my favor. I favored you and fulfill your part of the, of the what? Oh, yes. The Quran even says that there was a covenant between God and the Jews. Go to five, uh, chapter or chapter 5, verses 20 through 21. Go into the Holy Land, which God hath ordained for you. So here he's telling the Jews to go into the Holy Land that God has given you. It's kind of funny how the Quran even says the same thing. Going to, five, going to 12, Allah made a covenant with the children of Israel. So even the Quran admits that God made a covenant with the children of Israel. The children of Israel being who? the descendants of Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel after he had that little wrestling WWE match with God. Okay, so let's look at some of the, the, the history behind it. So 1400 BC, Joshua claims the Holy Land. Uh, then you have your period of judges for about 300 years. And you have the period of kings, which lasts for about 400 uh, years, maybe 500 years. 
Um, and then the uh, temple is built in 968. Notice this possession of the Holy Land from 1400 up to the temple being built. And then you have the kingdom becomes divided in 930. And then you have the northern kingdom taken into captivity. And wait, not, wait, Eric, what, don't what? you mean the furthest mosque was built in 968? The furthest mosque? No, no, I don't. No? I'm going to show you why here in a minute. Okay, all right. Just, just saying, okay. Uh, this is <laughs> yeah, before Christ, not, not, not after Christ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what, you know, you know what? Well, I'm not getting into it. B.C., B.C.E., C.E., A.D. You know, it's just maddening some of the things that you have to, how we address the dates today. But anyway, okay. And then you have the northern kingdoms taken in captivity, and then you have the southern kingdom uh, taken in captivity. The difference is, is that the southern kingdom returns and the northern kingdom does not. Uh, it was called the Babylonian captivity. And this is where you have Ezra and Nehemiah returning to Jerusalem. And keep in mind, during that time period, you know, Jew, the Jews had been falling in and out of idolatry from the period of king, from the well, from the period of kings and from the period of judges. And you would have, you know, really good kings, but then you would have a lot of bad ones. And they would be marrying into neighboring tribes, trying to establish uh, alliances and things of this nature. And when they did this, they would bring in those uh, foreign gods. And these foreign gods was like adultery to uh, God. So he let them be taken into captivity. Now notice when they do come back into uh, uh, the Holy Land in Ezra and Nehemiah 536, they rebuild the temple. They restore the uh, the walls. The, they re, uh, restore the uh, sacrificial system and they never go back into idolatry again. The problem was is they became way too legalistic. I just uh, can, I, can I point out something here too? No. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Thank Go you. Go ahead. All right. All right. I, 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 ju I just want to point out here. Notice they were taken into captivity um, for for idol idolatry, and they were allowed to return. It's called the righteous remnant. Um, so I just want to point this out on the people. Um, God's wrath rains down on the wicked and on the just at the same time. Because if the righteous remnant were not taken into captivity along with the wicked idolaters, there would be no righteous remnant. I just thought I'd point that out. Just you know. Okay. So. Yeah, and, th and this this is true. Well, okay. Let me let me get before we get I get sidetracked here. But thank you. Yeah, thanks, Brad, for pointing that out. Okay. Then we have Jesus crucifixion. Then we have the second temple is destroyed. Now this. Is, you know what's amazing about this? A lot of people don't realize is that all the sacrifices that were made after the uh, the uh, uh, death of Christ, crucifixion of Christ, were not accepted by God for a forty-year period, for a generation, and then it's then the second temple is finally destroyed. Wait, Little, wait, I got a comment on that too. Do you know that story? This is in the Talmud. Okay. Yes. Is, uh, if you want to explain it, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so, so basically, um, what happened was okay. Um, the same room that they would have met in the Sanhedrin that they would have met in. Okay, to condemn Jesus. Okay, after the crucifixion, it was an earthquake. Okay, and the the main stone that held the roof up totally, completely cracked in half. Okay, and destroyed that room. They could no longer meet in that room. Secondly, okay, there is a thing with the um, oh, what is it? Oh, I can't think of it now. Um, the the, the color of um, a thread or the color of a cloth. Okay. Uh, if, the, if the sacrifice was accepted, it would be a certain color, okay? Well, after that day, according to the Talmud, around that time, that, that, that sign that the sacrifice was to be accepted was was, was no longer given, okay? Um, I can't think of it. I would thank Anthony Rogers. Here. He'd tell it better. But basically, I'll have to look it up. I'm sorry to interrupt. I should have had more information looking up. But, but those are the two things. Those are Those are in the Talmud. Okay. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, even the Jews recognize exactly. and acknowledge the fact that their sacrifices were not their. their exactly. They call that holiday. The, the, is it the Day of Atonement? The, Day of Atonement. Yeah. Day okay. of Atonement. Oh, there you go. They, they know. Yeah, they they, they, that the, the Shekinah. The, the Shekinah had left the had left the temple. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. All right. Go Let's jump back over here. Am I going too fast? Or this is about the right space no, to skip through good. all this? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so then from 70 AD to 1917, you have the diaspora of the Jews. After 70 AD in Hadrian, 
Hadrian uh, took all the Jews into captivity, dispersed them from their land, and they were not allowed to go back to the land, well, at least during the, the time period of the Roman Empire. Uh, and that diaspora lasted until uh, 1917. Uh, then in seven or 326, you have the, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is built there, and you have the establishment essentially of uh, Christianity in the Holy Land. And then in 691, well, actually, we should say in 638, Jerusalem is sacked. I guess I, I, I didn't add that little fact in there uh, under the uh, uh, Caliph Umar. And then in 691, they build the Dome of the Rock. Now, notice. The Dome of the Rock is built in 691. Muhammad had his little night journey on his flying pony in, I think it was 627. I might, I'm willing to be wrong on that date. But the fact of the matter is, is how can you have, this isn't one of the, why the Quran is anachronistic. How can you have somebody going to the furthest mosque when that mosque doesn't even exist? And we're not even talking about the Al-Alaska Mosque, because the Al-Alaska Mosque, I think that's in here, uh, wasn't built until 705. Well, it's even better. He was he was in a dream. How can you know where somebody was in a dream? It wasn't a dream. He got on a flying donkey, and come on. Oh, come yeah, on. Aisha. Oh, the rock all the way there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Aisha even and, and, says that he didn't leave. He didn't go nowhere. That's true. There is oh, a well, hadith. What, what is that? What is Aisha? Know? She didn't even know how old she was when Muhammad climbed off on her. Let's not, let's not go you, there you, now. You can't, you can't believe the greatest scholar of Islam on these things. Yeah. But but no, seriously, you kafir, don't you understand? That there is proof. We have proof. You know how we have proof? Because there was a caravan of Arabs coming in, okay, into Mecca at this time. And one of them said they heard that one of the camels had died because they heard a frightening sound in the desert. Well, that was the time that Muhammad was flying around on his winged jackass, okay? Um, but yeah, and he was holding down the rocks because the rocks wanted to go to heaven with him. And you can actually go right now to the Dome of the Rock, reach your hand in a secret chamber, and touch the rocks and touch the fingerprints of Muhammad. Come on. Come on. Is that not true? Um, huh? Yeah. Uh, I want to show something here, because uh, when it talks about the furthest mosque, and fortunately, John Isaac is here tonight. Uh, he sent me this link. John, are you there, sir? He sent me yeah, this yeah. link. Okay, you sent yeah. me this link. So when we start talking about what the furthest mosque was, can you explain this to us? Uh, because the fact that history confirms that uh, the furthest mosque or Masjid, Masjid al-Aqsa was built after Muhammad, like 60 years uh, after death of Muhammad. Uh, then the story in Quran, the story in Hadith that uh, Muhammad made uh, uh, Isra to Masjid al-Aqsa doesn't make any sense. Uh, Muslim trying to hide this fact by saying, like this is an article, uh, some of Saudi people, especially the lawyers, say that uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, or the farthest mosque, is just beside Mecca, about 20 kilometers north from Mecca. Not that is in Jerusalem. This is okay. other thing. All right. So That's if you want to, to hide this error. Okay. So th th this, okay. So when we start talking about the furthest mosque, you're saying that this is a 20 mile walk. I mean, you could walk 20 miles in, in, a, in a day. Well, some of us could, but it doesn't matter. It is, it could in fact be the furthest mosque from Mecca at the time. Now, let me ask this. Okay. Was this, I'm <clears throat> sorry, was this night journey when Muhammad was, was this before the Hijra or is this after the Hijra? No, I think it's after Hijra. I can check the date exactly. It's I, I believe it's post Hijra. It's after, after, well, after Hijra, I think. It's after the Hijra? Yeah. Okay. Well, he, he, he was, he was, he was in uh, Aisha's bed clothing when it happened because she was there. <laughs> Well, no, we, we can't believe her. But but no, he got up to take a pee or something. I don't know what it was in the middle of the night, but no, that's what happened when he was in Aisha's room. But Aisha said, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> but what is that silly girl? Uh, she, no. uh, the statement is that he was sleeping in bed when he had this imaginary tale. Right. So right. Yeah. If you're sleeping, again, nobody can know where you are in your dreams, so they can't know that Al-Aqsa belongs there. 
Well, the re let's make sure we understand why this is important. The reason why this is important is this is why Muslims claim Jerusalem as their third holiest site is because Muhammad had made this journey uh, to Jerusalem. So just just to make sure that the, the, how they how they get around get around how they establish their claim to Jerusalem is the same. This is where Muhammad uh, made his. What are they? What, are they, what is this thing called? That he, there, there's a word for it. There's two. Well, no, there's what oh, the, 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 the mirage. The, 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 the mirage. There you go. The mirage. That's, the mirage. that's what it's that, Yeah. Okay. The well, mirage. Here's. I just want to tell everybody that's listening a funny backstory to this whole thing. Okay. So when when Uthman was it Uthman? Uh, uh, Uth, Uthman took Jerusalem, right? Omar. Okay. Omar. Omar took, Jerusalem, Omar, right. Omar took Jerusalem. Sorry. Um, when he showed up, he went to. Um, the um, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where the um, high priest or bishop was at, and he asked him where where is the, where was the temple built? Okay, because he didn't even know. Okay, now at this time, here's the funny thing: the Temple Mound was the municipal garbage dump. Why? Because it was a great insult to the Jews to dump garbage on their Temple Mound. Not only that, there was a, a guy, um, 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 what's his name, Constantine's son, uh, Julian the Apostate, who wanted to restore paganism, okay, after Constantine died, he became emperor for a while, and he wanted to reinstore paganism, so the way he thought he could do it was by rebuilding the temple at Jerusalem to prove that, um, um, that Jesus Christ uh, wasn't real because the temple's not going to be rebuilt until he returns, okay, according to preterism, according to that, you know, eschatology at the time. So here, this is, seriously, they went to rebuild the temple, earthquakes happened, fires came out from the ground, okay, and it scared all the workers away, and they never, because they couldn't complete it, and, and they, he gave up on the project, obviously. But anyway, after that, it became a municipal garbage dump. So this this bishop, this Catholic bishop, or maybe it was an Orthodox bishop, said, yeah, you want to go pray over there? Go pray in the garbage dump, dude. <laughs> Yeah. So, so he sent the Muslims to go pray in the garbage dump, man. I mean, yeah. seriously. Uh, and then they, then they, yeah, did what they did anyway. As well, as well, and they, well, they. And if you, if you notice, if you, if you, if you notice the location of the Dome of the Rock, it uh, in, in the Temple Mount, it sits overlooking the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, the Holy Sepulchre's, well, anyway, in, in, in relation to it, sits much lower than the Temple, the Temple Mount. Uh, itself. So having establishing the Dome of the Rock where it is was a way of establishing your dominance as rulers over that region, right. over that city. Yeah. So if, if you look where, and, and, and the thing is, is that the Dome of the Rock <coughs> is supposed to be, it's the Dome of the Rock is supposed to be a shrine commemorating the Mirage, the, the night journey. Yeah, there's the no. Seriously, they have this enclosed rock. Okay. They've got it enclosed. You can go pay it, you know, give a donation of five, ten dollars, whatever it is. Stick your hand through this curtain and touch the rock and feel the fingerprints of Muhammad, where Muhammad pushed the rocks down because the rocks wanted to go to heaven with him. And he said, No, you cannot go to heaven with me. And he pushed the rocks down. Okay, <laughs> that, that is according to this on the scripture. But one more thing, I'm sorry to take off. I'm sorry to Matt Madden the show here on you guys, but here's another little funny piece of information on this. Okay, so they build this thing, but but here's the thing: you, you were mentioned it's built on the high places. What does Daniel say? When you see the abomination that causes desolation sitting on the high places where it does not belong, then you will know. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Good old Daniel. Uh, okay, what, what I was going to say about the Dome of the Rock, though, if, if it was built, it was built, it supposedly was built to commemorate the the night journey of Muhammad. The problem is, is that the original inner and outer am ambulatories that are there make no mention of it. It doesn't say anything about his night journey on the original structures. The only thing that says on the inner and uh, inner amb ambulatories is that say not three. Jesus was only uh, a messenger. He wasn't. And, and so to me, looking at this thing, it's nothing but a shrine to Antichrist to deny the divinity of Christ. Yes. Is what it is. 
But this isn't this. And here's here's the thing. This isn't the farthest mosque, though, because the mosque that they're talking about, Al Aska, that John had mentioned, is that is is a mosque that wasn't built until 705. I don't think I have it in my slideshow here, but Al Aska was not built. And yeah, you know, okay, I don't have it in there. It uh, you have the Dome of the Rock being built in 691. Uh, by Ab Al Mal Al 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 Malik, uh, and I guess he built the uh, uh, Alaska also, but it wasn't built until 705. So here again, this is anachronistic. It mosque doesn't exist. If this is supposed to be the mosque that Muhammad did in fact have his night journey to, it wasn't there. There was nothing there. It was just one big flat temple mount. Okay, so we talked also about uh, the Ottoman Empire uh, being crushed in World War One, And this is what we, we were talking about um, on, on Sunday. You know, if you're going to get in a war with somebody, wars have consequences. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. They lost control of all of their land. They, be, had to be, they were forced to become secularized. And we also have the Balfour Declaration uh, at this time, too. And then to, uh, in 1920, you have the British Mandate, which is the, the mandate to rule over that region uh, and it did not expire until 1948. That's another date that is important to know. And notice what uh, the Balfour Declaration says. It says that they're going to, uh, they understand the sympathy of the Jewish uh, Zionist aspirations, and they favor the establishment in Palestine, a national home for the Jewish people. This is in 1917. So the Balfour Declaration essentially says this is what we plan to do. The problem was is the Muslims in the region at that time. They were not going to accept even one foot being given to the Jewish people. So what do you have at this time? You have a mass migration of Jews going there and buying up land from the Arabs at highly inflated prices. So when we look at Zionism, Zion, Zionism is used as a derogatory term today, when in fact it isn't. It's just this movement to go back for the Jewish people to go back to their homeland. That's all it yes, is. So exactly. And, and, people, and people, yeah, you're exactly right. It, people like to use it as a dirty word. So when we look at the British mandate, the British mandate initially wanted to give all of this land, which they call the, well, this over here, the Transjordan, to the Jews. So when you look at the size of that, the sheer size of this, the Arabs are like, of course not. We ain't ever going to allow uh, something like that to happen. So when the Jews uh, are told that, hey, well, there's going, there's time is coming where we're going to be giving you back your homeland, they start heading back there. This is after World War I, and they started going back there by the thousands. And as like I said, they were just essentially living out in the middle of nowhere in tents when they got there, and they were pay, buying up the land in, uh, in what is now Israel. And they returned from all over the world, even had newspapers. This is a newspaper that was printed in uh, Palestine, in Israel, Jerusalem, in 1920 here. It was a Jewish newspaper. Uh, what is Abbas saying here? Abbas, what is this? Oh, I'm telling propaganda. Well, Mr. Windhill, come on up here. And that, that, the Hebrew word there is Aretz, the land. There you go. Yes, uh, truth Truth in history is propaganda now. Okay, yeah. seriously, go ahead. Yeah, that's, you know, I wonder what, uh, okay, but, and here's, here's what, here's the, here's what, what happened that, that caused all of this. And this is, this, people like to discount this and not ever mention this, but the Holocaust, the Holocaust, and this is just my opinion, but it's a educated opinion based on history and facts. I don't, how do I, I don't, I want to say, I want to be careful how I word this. This was, this, this event is what, let me just put it this way. This event is what enabled the Jews to get back into their homeland. And here's why. If you look at the, the Holocaust itself and had, how it all began with, you know, the, the Treaty of Versailles and uh, Germany being shamed, being forced to pay all these reparations and the Jews getting uh, uh, 
blame for it. Why? Well, because they could only work in uh, institutions like banking and the legal work and things of that nature. They weren't allowed to work in trade unions. Uh, so they worked in they these financial institutions. So they're blamed for sending all the money out of the country. So when Hitler comes to power in 32, 33, uh, who does he blame? Well, of course, if you look at Mein Kampf, he was blaming the Jews. And when he wrote Mein Kampf, and he's going to blame the Jews as soon as he gets there. So what does he do? He starts instituting the Nuremberg Laws in uh, uh, 1935. He confiscates their property and moves the Jews to ghettos, which are enclosures where they have no freedoms, takes away their right to own property. And then you have uh, the movement from the ghettos into these concentration camps. And in these concentration camps, this is where they are event essentially worked literally uh, to death. And then from the concentration camps, then you have the transportation to uh, these death camps, places like, of course, Auschwitz-Birkenau, Sobibor, Treblinka, uh, all these death camps in uh, that, that, that we find in uh, Poland. Um, and they are, this is where they develop the gas chambers. And this is where we get the stories of Jews being sent to the gas chambers, millions of them dying in these gas chambers, and their bodies are cremated uh, forever. Then after the liberation, uh, people started realizing the, 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 the scope of the Holocaust, where you have six million, two-thirds of European Jewry are killed in just four years, two-thirds. And they start realizing how terrible this was for the Jewish people. And the reason why the Jews got caught in this is, now of course, the, the hatred of Hitler for them. The guy's a psychopath. Uh, but the fact was is that they didn't have anywhere to go. They had no place to, to flee to. In the United States, we do not have, we, we're not innocent in all of this either. There was an entire shipload of Jews that were brought to the United States, and Roosevelt would not allow them to get off that ship. He sent them back to Europe, and just as soon as they got back to Europe, they were put on trains, transported to uh, Auschwitz, and they were all killed. Thousands of them. So we were just, as a, as a nation, you know, we're just as culpable as uh, the rest of the world. Um, uh, for, for that crime. So what does the world do? This world say, well, look, they didn't have anywhere to go. So let's grant them, let's grant them th their homeland back. And that's what they did. So they, uh, the British mandate ends in 1948. And if you look at the lands here, these lands here, this is what, uh, this blue area here is what was uh, allowed to them uh, when they uh, claimed their sovereignty. They partition, pay, uh, partition this off for the Jews, and the Arabs rejected just a sliver. Now, remember that picture that I showed you of the Transjordan, how much they were originally supposed to get. And look at this little sliver of land that they're actually getting. Tiny. Yeah, and notice this land down here, this land down here, that's nothing but desert, wasteland. It's nothing down there. So this is all they got. Yeah, but what did the Jews do with that desert? Uh, well, the well, we're getting that old. Oh, okay, Brad. God, wait, hold on. Um, so just as soon as they <laughs> declared their independence, they were attacked by Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and uh, forces from Saudi Arabia, and they whooped wow. their butts. Now it took them a year to do that. But they did whoop their butts. Now, when you look at what happened after uh, or during the war, as these Arab countries are coming into Israel, they're telling these Palestinians, quote unquote, get out of the way and uh, go get behind us. And we're going to push these Jews into the sea and then you can come in and you can take their property. Well, at the end of the war, after losing it, these Palestinians had nowhere to go. Now, they could have been ab absorbed and assimilated into lands like in Egypt or in Jordan or in Syria, and none of those countries would accept them. Now, again, this was part of a conversation I had with John Isaac today. John? Yes, sir. <laughs> can, you, can you come in and explain to us why these countries did not want to take these Palestinians? Um, look, as I said uh, from the beginning, and uh, I always say it's uh, a religious problem. 
no Muslim can accept uh, defeat in front of Jews. They have their own hadith that before last day in uh, uh, last day, they should kill Jews and even Jews hide the uh, back of uh, rocks or something. The rocks speak or the trees speak. There is Jews here. Then all Muslims have this hadith in their mind. They will not accept leaving any inch for any uh, for any uh, any Jews. Uh, the, if if let us say uh, Egypt took the people in Gaza and um, uh, let, let us say Jordan takes the people in West Bank, then there is no Palestine. Then it it will be a peace between uh, Arabs or Muslims in general and uh, Israel after defeating the Muslims before. Then uh, this is not accepted by Muslims and it is not political issue. It is a religious issue. Okay, so, so so in other words, they're using the Palestinians as pawns. Yeah, yeah, just uh, just uh, like uh, something to, to say that uh, this is our land. Uh, this is Palestine. Palestine will not die. We'll go to liberate uh, Palestine, liberate the farthest mosque. All of these uh, are is hidden un under the hadith and the stories of Muhammad. They, sh they should kill all Jews. Yeah, so no. if, they, if they would accept them, then that would be admitting defeat, and yeah. that, that's exactly and, and that's exact and it's it's a, it's a religious uh, uh, admonition to to keep that land from uh, falling you, into the hands of the Jews. I tell you, I tell you something maybe strange, but this is fact happened to me. Uh, in my WhatsApp account, I have friends uh, since days of the school. Like uh, 20 years or more than 20 years ago, we were in this uh, WhatsApp group. And when United uh, Arabic Emirates make uh, peace with uh, made the peace with uh, with Israel, I congr congratulate all of us for this peace. What happened? They attacked me and kicked me out from the WhatsApp WhatsApp group because they don't want peace. Peace for Islam now means defeat. Defeating who? Defeating. The worst of creatures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So something I, I want to point out, maybe you can verify this or tell me I'm wrong, but but I've heard from many of my Arabic friends in the real world that I've had over the years, um, mostly Iraqi um, um, and even Palestinians, actually. And they said that um, Arabs hate Palestinians um, because they not only did they lose their land, but they lost their land to Jews. Which is astafagalat. That is a, a a serious thing, but they actually really despise the Palestinian people, especially um, Lebanese um, um, and uh, Jordanian. Uh, uh, Jordanians really despise um, Palestinians because of what they've done with the refugee camps and such. Can you confirm or or deny or? Yeah, um, or even Egyptians don't like don't love the Palestinian people, especially in Gaza, because most of them are Muslim Brotherhood. They, making, they are making trouble to Egypt every day and every night. Uh, but the, as I said, that's, that's a problem. If they say there is no Palestine, Palestine is done, then Islam means that it collapsed. Just the, the have, you'd like to Palestine return back just for this religious purpose. But uh, really most of the uh, most of Arab don't like uh, Palestinian, and I saw when um, Saddam Hussein um, invaded the uh, Kuwait in 1990, uh, 1990 something, 1992. August 1990. Yeah, um, the Palestinian people. My father was there in uh, in Kuwait. The uh, Palestinian really? people stole the all the money from banks. Stole even my father's money. And they hate, Palestinian also hate the Egyptians much. They, that they, 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 were, they were working in Kuwait. They don't love... Well, let me, let me, okay, so you're saying that the Palestinians that were working in Kuwait at the time, yeah, when Saddam Hussein came in, they stole the money out of the banks? They stole money from the bank of banks Kuwait. They stole a lot of uh, appliances, uh, like uh, uh, bridges or microwaves, whatever. All of these taken by them, and they go to Saddam Hussein, help us, give us places, give us uh, a place to live, and we will help you. And this is what happened. 
Yeah, they pillaged. Wow, it. they so, pillaged so, Detroit. So, I didn't know so, that. That's that's that's. You know that that's interesting. So the Palestinians, no, so the Palestinians pillaged and plundered, and then gave all the loot and booty to Saddam Hussein, looking for. Um, um, uh, uh, wow, that's that's incredible. Uh, that, that's incredible. Anyway, I'm sorry. But. No, all right. Let's so let's get uh, let's get back on this. Uh, okay, so it's great that we always get those insights from people that uh, like John. I appreciate John coming to the show and, and sharing that with us. Okay, so um, okay, we're doing police. We've got okay. Uh, the Jew. Okay, now let's let's completely understand this. When those Arabs that were living in Palestine are placed in refugee camps at the conclusion of uh, the war of, for independence in Israel. The Jews across the Arab world were ethnically cleansed from those lands. I know this firsthand because I mentioned this on Saturday or Sunday, I'm sorry, that the family that my wife and I stayed with when we were in Israel, their parents were from Morocco. And they said they and they were told to get out of Morocco. They were only uh, allowed to leave with the clothes that were on their back and they were sent to Israel. They were ethnically cleansed out of all of those uh, Arab countries. So if can, the Palestinians can I, can were to I get, some, hold on, let me just, some let, yeah, yeah, okay. Let me just, let me just say this: if the Palestinians truly want their land back, then what they're going to have to do is go to all these other countries and give those Jews their land back. This is a result. This is what happens when wars are fought genocides occur this is a natural result of that and the issue here is, is egypt and jordan they refuse to accept those uh palestinians as citizens um uh, or assimilate or accommodate them into their culture all right go ahead red okay so that? so here, here's the funny thing on this I, 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 and i'm sorry um, the, the, the leaders of these Arab countries, these despots at the time, uh, now, now, now mind you, they were, um, they, they came out of the Ottoman Empire, okay, they, I mean, they, they were basically, well, they, they were basically given um, rule and jurisdiction um, 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 based on their political allegiance and stuff like that, especially to the British Empire, okay, so these were not the brightest people in the world, okay, <laughs> think about this, okay. <laughs> they expel all the Jews in their countries, right? Where do these Jews go? They go to Israel, thereby increasing the population density of Jews. Not only that, but they don't take in, well, they kind of do. They don't take in the Arab-Palestinian population. They put them in these refugee camps, okay? I'm going to get to that in a second. But but here's the funny thing. So 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 they so they depopulate the Arab population and repopulate okay the is the, the, the Jewish population in Israel. You see what I'm saying? So so they so 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 these numbskulls, these morons actually did the did the did the state of Israel a favor by doing this. Now you, you mentioned about right of return stuff like that. Dude, I guarantee you, it ain't no Jew want to go back to Jordan. <laughs> ain't no um, 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 Iraq has expelled fifty thousand of them. They don't want to go back to Iraq. You know, they are right now. They don't want to go back to Iran. They don't want to. You know what I'm saying? They're like, no, we're happy. We're, we're, we're fine. Okay, but, but, but be that as it may, here is the sad and tragic part of this. In nowhere in the world, no refugee status. Okay. Has this ever been done? They created the, the the new well at the time the new UN under oh has it, it was only done once for the Palestinians and never been done again. Okay, created a permanent refugee status. Okay, there was no mandate to absorb the population. Okay, of the refugees into um, the absorbing countries. There was no, um, um, you know, dispersal or, or or diaspora or whatever to accept them in anywhere else in the world. No, they were concentrated in these refugee camps that later became cities. If you look at these refugee camps, they're cities. They have plumbing. They have sewer systems. They have skyscrapers. They have, you, you know what I mean? They have all electricity. They have all. They're, they're not tents. They have all the amenities. Okay, of a city. Okay. Now, true, third world city, but, you know, none the, none the same, okay? All right. Now, think about this. They deliberately did this to keep these people as refugees. Why? 
Because eventually, hopefully, in their mind, sometime, there's going to be a right of return for them where they can return and guess what? Overpopulate the land with the great, great, great grandchildren, okay? Of those that were dispossessed by war, the war that the Arabs started. I'm going to give you one more little fun fact of history that, that the Arabs and the Muslims uh, don't like. This is documented in history. On the radio, in newspaper, in flyers, during 1940, what, the 40, 47, right? That, that was what happened, 47, 48? 48. Right, yeah, okay, yeah, 48, okay. The Arabs, the Egyptians, uh, was it Egyptians, Jordanians, Iraqis? Um, uh, yeah, I think that was it. No, there was one other. Uh, but, but either way, they print, especially the Egyptians, broadcast on the radio. Palestinians, Arabs, flee, get out of the way of our machine guns. You can, we are not here for booty. You can have back your land. We're just here to drive the Jews out. So they told these Palestinians in these villages to get out of their way, okay, to flee their cities, okay, and they could return after they kicked the Jews out, right? Well, they didn't kick the Jews out. So they told them to leave. They did this to them, okay? You know what I mean? Where the Jews are saying, no, no, stay, stay. We can build a community together or a nation together. And they're like, no, the other, you know, the Egyptians, the Iraqis, the, 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 the Jordanians, they told us to get out of the way of their machine guns so they could kill you. <laughs> so we're leaving. Yeah, that didn't work out so well for it, did it? I'm just saying. You, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so that's just some fun facts of history um, for you um, Muslims who are listening. But let's continue on. I'm sorry. Nope, it's all right. Uh, yeah, you, well, when we, when we start looking at the broadcasting of that, of, of, of you know, saying, get out of the way, we're going to push the Jews into the sea, and then once uh, we push them in the sea, you can have it, they didn't count on the fact that they're going to have their butts handed to them. The, the, the fact that Israel won that war in of itself is a miracle. You, I mean, they nope. had nothing. I mean, you just think they had absolutely nothing. We imposed, and you have, an, you know, the U.S. imposed a strict arms embargo on them that did not apply to the Arabs who we were selling weapons to, just to let you know. Okay, and those Arabs are using those weapons on the Jews, and they still got beat. You know, yes. they, 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 had to buy the, they, they had to buy the weapons um, from Czechoslovakia. Um, and, and the way, dude, there's, there's some really great stuff on YouTube, these documentaries of the guys that were in there. These are just straight up. Okay. They, they were world war two pilots, but these are just Jews from New York, the Bronx and stuff, you know, out of work, you know, or working, blah, 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 whatever. But they're like, Hey, come and work for us and smuggling these weapons. No, it's a beautiful tale, man, of how they had to do it. And they, they had to fly around U S forces. They had to fly around the British. They, they were, some of them were arrested and put in jail. Okay. No, this was, this was serious, serious, a, 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 a liberation, a fight for their lives. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful story. It really is. Okay. Uh, let's jump back to, <clears throat> let's jump back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So when we look at the Jews being ethnically cleansed from their areas, when they, when they got to Israel, they were living in tents, folks, and we're not talking about tents for a day or two. They're t they were living in tents for a year. They they created small community communities that are called like uh, kibbutzes, and in these kibbutzes, the kibbutz, kibbutz, the the, the 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 conditions were just horrendous, and they carved out of that land what is now Israel. They started immediately started planting trees. They started uh, irrigating the land, and it's like Israel supplies more fruit exports more fruit to europe than any other country on the planet yeah that's, let, how, let's, much, that's how much work they've done there but i'm let, getting let's, no, no let, let, let's let, let, let's uh blockade all, all of israel what, what do they call it oh, the psd moment or whatever bds we're getting to that B, BDS. BDS. Okay. Getting yeah, to yeah. Yeah. we don't want fruit no all right um okay and then of course egypt jordan they refused to accept uh the Palestinians uh, right of return. And this is what Israel looked like right after that war. These are the armistice lines in 1949 after the war from independence. So you notice that there isn't a lot of, uh, uh, it, it's more it's more streamlined. This, this sector right here is wider, is more defensible. And uh, this area right here, of course, shrinks significantly. 
And uh, this, of course, is cordoned off. And uh, as far as the Gaza Strip is concerned. All right, let's uh, move to the next one. All right, 1964, the PLO is established. The Palestinian Liberal Organization by this, this uh, it was actually created by Egypt. This is up right up your alley, John, uh, by this guy here, Yasser Arafat. Now, Yasser Arafat, his, uh, his mentor was the Grand Mufi, Mufti of Jerusalem, Amin al-Husseini. So this guy is, uh, is uh, influenced by al-Husseini. Well, who was al-Husseini? Al-Husseini is the one that says, Arabs, rise, one man, and fight for your sacred rights. Kill the Jews wherever you find them. This pleases God, don't you see? This saves your honor. God is with you. Now, who was al Husseini? Well, he was Hitler's pal. You know, Hitler, the guy that just stuck six million of them into ovens in Poland. Yeah, that guy. So when you start looking at a correlation between Nazism and this desire to remove Jews from their holy land, you don't need to look any further than this. And the fact that they gave that... that um, Arafat, a Nobel Peace Prize, is just beyond, beyond unforgivable. Uh, I mean, you just can't, you just don't um, uh, get away with that. All right, so let's look at the 67-day war. Now, in the 67-day war, you have, you have uh, Egypt massing soldiers, armor along the border with uh, Israel, threading Israel. Israel has to shut down the entire country. You have threats from Syria up here in the Golan Heights. You have threats from Jordan here within the West Bank. But the main concern, of course, is Egypt. So what does Israel do? Um, okay, and they shut up. Okay, they shut down the, the Straits of, uh, of uh, Tehran down here and the Suez Canal, which uh, shut down the shipping going through there. So that was one of the main concerns internationally anyway. And then, it, of course, occupies Sinai. Okay, I just said that. And then Israel... What Israel does in response to this, instead of waiting for Egypt to launch the offensive on their terms, Israel launches a surprise attack on the Egyptian Air Force and destroys the entire Egyptian Air Force in two hours while they're still on the ground. And uh, if you read the, 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 the details behind that, it just happened to coincide with what you would call a shift change where there was uh, no communication going on between the people that were coming on to shift and the people le leaving the shift. So it just, hap just happened to happen just right at the right time. Kind of comical. Anyway, uh, so Egypt, uh, and, then, and then plus on top of that, Egypt's armor is uh, subsequently destroyed in place uh, in the Sinai. And then you have uh, Syrians attacking out of the Golan Heights, and they're turned back, and then... Uh, Israel is practically begging Jordan to stay out of it because it's not going to do them the good. And Jordan, of course, uh, not wanting to listen to the Jews themselves, they decide to attack too. So when you look at all of these attacks, they're repelled through uh, Israeli air superiority and the Arab armies are, are forced to, again, sign another treaty, another armistice in disgrace. Now, Can, I, can I add some color commentary on that? Uh, no, uh, you know, so you know, go ahead. Right? No, go ahead. Okay. Go, go. So, so there are recordings, there are um, NSA, CIA recordings, I forgot which one, um, got them. Where, um, what's his name? The dude from Egypt is talking from, to the dude to Syria. Gavin okay. Nasser. Uh, yeah, Nasser is talking to what's his name in, in, in Syria. Okay, now each of them have lied to each other. Okay. Seriously, because they actually had a plan for this, and they actually the Jordanians um, um, also were part of the plan. But all of them have been lying to each other. Well, now the jig is up, and they're trying to get the Jordanians involved, right? Okay? And they're talking to each other. And what do they say? They say, we'll just blame the Americans. <laughs> I am not making this up. We'll blame the Americans' interference. Like, oh, that's brilliant for our losses. Okay? Blah, blah, blah. But no, but no, the whole thing, they're lying to each other, okay? Completely and totally. They're saying, because no, Egypt was supposed to advance so far. Egypt said, we are advancing so far. But no, they were getting destroyed. Syria was supposed to advance so far. That was going to trigger the Egyptian advancement, which they actually did, okay? But then they got slaughtered, okay? You know what I mean? 
Okay, so they're completely lying to each other. Here's another fun fact. You gotta look this up. There's this Jewish spy who actually infiltrated the highest ranks of the Syrian military. And he planted on the Golan Heights. Maybe this is not 1967 war. Uh, no, you know, that's the, that, that, that's the next war. I'll, I'll, we'll get to 73, that. 73, Yom Kippur. Yeah, 73, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah well, that's a fun story. But, but anyway, I just wanted to point this out. They lied to each other, created this whole mess, and what did they say? We're going to blame the Americans. Well, they have uh, Gabal Nasser at that time um, called... I'm not sure if Brezhnev was in office at that time uh, or which uh, Russian uh, prime minister was in, uh, was in charge at that time. But he called him begging to get the Russians to uh, come to their aid. And he was like, dude, no, we've given you, sold you all of this equipment, all of this armor, all of these airplanes, and you've squandered it. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. They, they sold them the high-tech tank busters, I think it was. Okay? Well, no, they and, sold them the arm, all of their armor, right, all right. of their aircraft. Egypt couldn't build anything. They weren't building right, anything right. in Egypt. It was the Russians but, but, that were selling it to them. But they sold them this weapon system that, that had this, you know, a, a, a radius, kill radius. And, and, and But they had to advance the weapon system with the army. Well, they didn't do that. They advanced the army because the Syrians were, were pushing them to. So they advanced the army outside of this kill radius of this weapon system that was destroying armor. Okay? And then forget about the, the Israelis. No, it wasn't. I'm sorry. It wasn't armor. It was anti-aircraft. Um, and, and they advanced their, their armor outside of the protection, okay, of the kill radius, okay, of, of these uh, surface-to-air missiles. And, and once they did that, that's when the Israelis just pounded the armor and they were able to take them out. Yeah, interesting story. Yeah, that's it, it's kind of like the the what they call it the highway of death when Saddam was trying to make a withdrawal from Kuwait. Pretty ugly stuff. Okay, uh, so let's look at the the results of the Six Day War. Notice at the beginning of the Six Day War, the possessions of Israel right here. This is controlled by Jordan. This is controlled. Uh, well, this is the Gaza Strip anyway, and this is what's controlled. And this is controlled by uh, Syria. But notice, and I also want as an aside here, I'll tell you that these Golan Heights, the Syrians used to sit up in the Golan Heights and shoot down at kibbutzes right on the Sea of Galilee. I've talked, I had a personal conversation with the guy whose parents were. Uh, uh, one of the original occupants up there, and they had a kibbutz right up here in the Sea of Galilee, and they would have to hide at a certain time during the day because the Syrians would start shooting into their kibbutz, yep. shooting at people to terrorize them. So this terrorization of Israel from strategic location, these Golan Heights, I mean, they're 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 really high hills. Let's just put it that way. Well, they're, in fact, they're, they're mountains, but it looks right down along this, uh, on the east side of the Sea of Galilee. All right, I digress. But look at... Um, how much land now uh, Israel uh, possesses after this war? They have the Sinai, they have the Golan Heights, and of course they have. They took East Jerusalem, they've taken control of the Temple Mount, and they have the West Bank itself. But then the Arabs they get together, they start colluding, and it comes up with the uh, Karatem Resolution, and this is where they all get together, and you have the three no's. Here are the three no's: they're not going to have any peace with Israel, they're not going to have any recognition of Israel, and they're not going to have any negotiations with Israel. And this eventually leads to the Yom Kippur War uh, in 1973. Now, if you look at the attempts for peace, um, the Camp David, uh, and, here, and, here's, and here's the thing that we need to understand. I'm not sure when, when I cover this, but the Camp David Accords returned the Sinai Peninsula to Egypt. And here's why. This is what you, I, I'm going to take this off. I just want to make sure people understand this. The reason why Israel, um, from a legal perspective from the laws of international warfare from an from an international position they were required to return the sinai to egypt and the reason is is that if you take land in a war in which you initiated you are not internationally entitled and recognized internationally as being entitled to that land now you notice that israel at the beginning of the war, did start, did launch a uh, preemptive attack on the Egyptian Air Force 
Well, why? Because Egypt had amassed all their armor up on, this, on the Israeli border. They were going to attack. So instead of waiting for the Egyptians to attack them, the Israel, Israel took out their aircraft or their uh, air, air ability in two hours. So therefore, since they attacked Egypt first, they were not legally uh, allowed to keep it. So they negotiated with Anwar Sadat, and that didn't end well for Anwar Sadat, oh, by the way, uh, the Camp David Accords, and Jimmy Carter, of all people in the world. And then you have uh, the Oslo Accords in 1993, and this is where you have Billy Clinton and uh, Menachem Begin and uh, Yasser Arafat. And then you have the Second Intifada in 2000, where they start uh, the other uprisings. And look at here. In 2005, Ariel Sharon returns the Gaza Strip to the Palestinians, gives them complete autonomy over, of, of that land, turning over buildings and the businesses. Uh, they destroyed everything. And what do they do? They elect Hamas. They elect a terrorist organizations to rule uh, their country. And what happens? They start rocketing, shoot, sending rockets into Israel almost immediately after this. And if you look at uh, this, the, the, the uh, recent uh, volley of rockets coming out of uh, the Gaza Strip, um, here you have 690 rockets. And this isn't even covering last year, what we did last year. And now let's look at the, the condemnation of the UN on Israel. From uh, 1993 to 2013, what do we have? Or no, let's, let's, let's back up here. It's 1955 to 1992. Uh, you have the, the number of uh, resolutions against uh, Israel. You got five calls on Israel refraining from holding military parade. Israel deplores Israel military parade, censures Israel for administrative acts to change the status of Jerusalem. We're up to 22 deplores Israel, condemns Israel. Uh, 41 here censures Israel in the strongest terms. Jerusalem as its basic law reiterates Israel's claim to Jerusalem are null and void. Uh, strongly condemns Israel, condemns Israel vigorously for defending themselves when they're bombed. Uh, my gosh, uh, we're up to 62 here. Condemns Israel for violence against Palestinians at Haram al Sharif Temple Mount. Oh my gosh. It, it is, they're rioting, but Israel, when they try to protect themselves, they're condemned for it. Israel defied U.S. You know, deporting <laughs> deporting uh, Palestinian civilians. They're, they're condemned for that. These people that are attacking them, they're, they're condemned for that. Uh, calls for the safety and protection of Palestinian cities. Calls for withdrawal of Israel troops from Palestinian cities, including Ramallah. Uh, emphasizes urgency. So you have 76 resolutions against Israel. One country in the UN. Do you mind if I say one thing? I, I just, I feel that this is so sad. This is not going to bring peace. The United Nations should be bringing peace and conflict uh, to- Idiotic. Because the thing is, you could say I care about Palestinians, which is extremely valid and care fair and kind and compassionate, but we need to care about Israelis too. They both matter. And that's, that, that is, that's an issue. It's not validating uh, Israeli people, so they should be validated. That's it, it, well, it gets worse here, uh, Isa. Uh, let me, and uh, contemporary, okay, so look at here. You have 76 resolutions against one country by the UN. But let's look at the resolutions against the Palestinians. How many do you have? One. One resolution against attacks by Palestinians against Israeli citizens. One. One resolution. And look what it says. It calls on the Palestinian Authority to meet its express commitment to ensure that those responsible for terrorist acts are brought to justice. Those responsible for terrorist attacks brought to justice by the Palestinians. Are they brought to justice? No. No, they're, they're given they're given streets named after them, high right. schools named after them. Uh, right. um, um, yeah, no, they're, they're martyrs. No, they, they're they're no, no, no. I'm gonna, I got it right here, Red. I got I got this right here. Pay is pay to slay. So when you look at uh, Palestinian uh, payments to the families of those people who do kill Israelis and, and die in the process, here's what they get. You get six thousand shekels immediately. $1,700. And in the Gaza Strip, that's a lot of money, folks. Uh, you get 
1,400 shekels a month for life. And then the wife gets 114 per child, $57. Uh, if you're in Jerusalem, you get 86. You know, look at their We're paying, paying for that. People. We're, we're right. actually paying for that. Yeah. Exactly. When we send money to, uh, uh, what's the, or what are they called now? Not Hamas. We send it to the Palestinian Authority. We send it to PA. This is where the money's going. This is where your, your tax dollars are going. They're paying these people to kill Israelis. On top of that, look at this. When you look at people who are thrown in jail for uh, uh, terrorist activity or planning terrorist at uh, attacks or committing crimes against Israelis, they're paying these people and their families money for every month that they're in jail. This is absolutely sick. What's going on there? Look at the number of UN resolutions in 2018. 2018. He had 20 resolutions against Israel. 21. Iran had one resolution by the UN against it. Iran, you know, the guys that want to make a nuclear bomb and bomb Israel. North Korea, the despotic kingdom itself, where if you even dare to have any religion of any kind, you're thrown into the gulag. Russia, yeah, Russia gets one. The United States even got dinged that year. I can't even remember what it was for, but you know, <laughs> got a yeah, we got a resolution passed against us. Oh, Probably for George Floyd. Yeah, uh, this is 2018. No, George Floyd is 2020. Uh, Hamas, zero. They're, you're, you're, you're launching rockets into Israel. No condemnation. No, no, no. China, China, none. Turkey, Erdogan, none. Iraq, none. Venezuela, yeah, none. What about last year? Let's look at last year. Last year, Israel had 14 resolutions passed against it, condemning it. Iran? Yeah, we're building, we're still looking at building that nuclear bomb. They get one. North Korea? One. Russia, only because they invaded the Crimea, they get one. Uh, Mir, uh, Mir, Myanmar, they get one, only because they had a military coup and killed like 800 people and imprisoned you know thousands of people. That's the only reason why they got condemned. Syria, which is a humanitarian crisis, gets zero. Hamas, who launches a whole bunch of rockets into Israel uh, last May, none. China, you know, they're they're ethnically cleansing. They're coming in genocide, which the genocide, NBA supports. Exactly, yeah. right. Yeah, with, with the Uyghurs, they don't even get condemned. Turkey, no, of course. Nigeria, where you have a Christian genocide going on. Nope, not a word, not boo. In Venezuela, zero. So when we start oh, come on, we, no, wait, we, we, we didn't get one. We didn't get one for George Floyd. Come on. Uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm no, no, no. Look at the these attacks. Over 4,000 rockets are fired from Gaza last May. And a lot of them, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of them didn't even make it to Israel because these guys have, well, number one, if you, <laughs> if you watch recent debates, people are historical illiterates. And it, it, obviously, they're engineering illiterates also. That's what drives them. Anyway, uh, so when Israel responds, Israel's condemned for having rockets shot at it. Israel's condemned when it, these rockets are launched at it. And you think about this, Israel uses its rockets to protect its people. The Palestinians use their people to protect their rockets. And the imam's okay with that. Yes, this is, yeah, th that's exactly right. Yeah, they have a right to defend themselves. Defend themselves from what? They didn't start it, for crying out loud. Anyway, uh, I, I don't know if this is Golda Mayor said this. Can, we can forgive the Arabs for killing our children. We cannot forgive them for forcing us to kill their children. And we only have peace with the Arabs when they love their children as much as they yeah, hate that was us. Golda. Yeah, that was Golda. Then we have the BDS movement going on today. The BDS boycott, divest, and sanction. Destroy Israel through economic means. Now look at this. Which look the at, look Democratic at this. Party, wait, which the Democratic Party is almost officially... Uh, adopted that no th they will oh, yes. by, by, by the next convention they will officially adopt this as, so? their, as their platform a guarantee guaranteed the progressives have totally taken over the socialists have totally taken over because of because because the old guard of the democratic party are all senile you got Nancy Pelosi. She, she's retiring. You got Chuck Schumer. Um, he doesn't care. You got I mean uh, <clears throat> Nadler. Um, he's brain dead. Uh, I mean, no, the the entire old guard of the Democratic Party is gone. Okay, the watchdogs, what you would say. Okay, of the Democratic Party that offers any semblance, any sanity. Okay? Even Steny Hoyer has lost his mind. Yeah, I mean, no, I used no, to no, think no. he was kind of a. 
uh, they're gone. Reason, they're, they're gone. But, yeah, he's, no, he's you, you, you only he's have you, you you have Manchin, okay, a, a Democrat from Virginia or from West Virginia, and you've got the bisexual. No stuff. She she says I'm a bisexual swinging um um Democrat, but I am against this crap that they're po- po- pushing out us. How long can these two hold out? Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, not very long. Okay, well, let's hope but they hold, hold out until November of 2022. Uh, uh, so well, is it election this year? Yeah, the election is this year. Come think about it. Yep, it is. They hold it out is. No. November. Yep, this they, year. they will. They will. They, they will. Oh, Schumer is going to push the filibuster thing, which he actually implemented. He created the filibuster of 60 votes. Okay. Seriously, he's the one who created it. No, now it's he's been trying around. To... That's a part. No, no that no, filibuster been no, around no, a lot longer no, than no. The Schumer. filibuster. No, no, no. The filibuster has been around around for a long time. Uh, Schumer actually created the sixty votes. Okay, for the filibuster, he actually reduced it. Okay, it, 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 there's a long history to this filibuster. Well, okay, so no, the filibuster used to used to have to sit there and speak and speak and speak and speak and speak, and speak right? Well, they, they said, we don't want to speak, so let's just have 60 votes. You know what I mean? That was Schumer who implemented this. Well, it was, no, okay? it was, it was to cut off debate is what the 60 vote. Right, was. right. No, it, no, it yeah, he, he reduced it. Yeah, he, whatever it was, this was Schumer's idea, okay? All right? But now he's going against it, okay? Uh, um, I, can I interject one quick sure, thing? Sure, sure. I wanted to ask to talk about BDS a little bit. I understand that people feel traumatized. There is pain and suffering that people feel, and we should validate that. However, is BDS a way of validating people's pain and suffering? Can we actually have dialogue when you're just condemning one side of, of the group, of, of, the, of the conflict? You can't actually have a real conversation if you're just saying, I'm going to boycott you, I'm going to divest and sanction you without actually hearing your point of view. There's a really great... Um, presenter, his name's Rudy Rockman, and he goes around and he interviews people about Israel. He asks people about Israel, and some people are like, Israel's the worst place ever, and then he's very kind and compassionate, he's like, well, why do you think Israel is bad? All these claims and stories about Israel, a lot of them are not true. It's just bad publicity that Israel gets, and it's not a fair conversation that we're having in the space. We can validate Palestinian suffering without throwing Israel and Israelis under the bus. I think that's important. And if you don't like some of the politicians there, that's fine. Some people don't like politicians here, but this is a part of democracy. We're allowed to not like our politicians. You know, we're allowed to have dissent. And that's the important thing. We should have dissent if we disagree. We don't have to have violence, but we can have verbal open dissent to things that we don't agree with. And that's good. I'm going to ask you a question. question. Sure. I want want to ask you a question. I'm going to throw up uh, this next slide up on the screen. Okay. Here's the guy that founded... uh, the BDS movement. Yes. Uh, Omar uh, Bagatti. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> he's, his, his, he stated that he, they oppose uh, the Jewish state in any part of Palestine. No Palestinian will ever accept a Jewish state uh, in Palestine. So wh- where do you, wh- where does the conversation begin with a guy like that? Well, you know, I think it's interesting. I'm not sure if this is the same man, but I think it is the same because I did a, uh, Israel training course. Like I learned all about this situation. So I know what I'm talking about when, when I'm talking about it. Um, it's a great organization called Feel for Truth. Very great organization to learn more about Israel and the understanding of what's going on. Um, and it's very objective and fair and honest, I think. I, I think that's the same man who actually got education in Israel. I well, think he's a Palestinian, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His, his I think he's an Arab, a, Israeli a, uh, a citizen or a Palestinian citizen of Israel, and he's gotten, he's gotten actual um, services from Israel, and that's the perfect example. I'm like, did you not? If this is the same person, I'm not exactly sure. I forget the person exactly, but I think it's the same person. Would didn't you get education in Israel, regardless of your ethnicity? Israel does not discriminate based on your religion your ethnicity and in fact it actually follows a muslim thing from the greatest empire of Islam, like the greatest element for the empire of islam which is the ottoman empire which is the millet system and it's no muslim country is even using the millet system now where they actually have people from different cultures and religions going into their own spaces and being respectful of that it you know of course so it's pretty it's pretty amazing and nobody wants to talk about that they say oh it's horrible second class citizenship that's going on there. And I would say, 
I don't think so. You might use the look at Gaza and the West Bank. That's a more complex situation that's nuanced and needs to be dealt with and with a fair objective lens, not just screaming and yelling. Well, how, okay, so okay, yeah. you say we have, we have, how do you deal with Gaza? I mean, so the thing is, to be honest it, here, if with, with Gaza, they allow them to have free, fair, open elections. Yes. And they elect Hamas to rule them. Right. So what do you do now? Do we have to I, go I, in there and remove the governmental system that they elected for themselves and say, no, start over? Is it, I mean, what, what, what do you do with something like that? Same thing with the West Bank, with uh, Fatah. You know, you, the, the, the bottom line is, is that these entities that there, Israel is being forced to deal with, don't want to negotiate with Israel. They, they, they want no part of a two-state solution. They want the Jews gone. The entirety yes. of that land, according to them, belongs to them. And any Jew squatting on that land is unacceptable. So when this guy says they will not accept a Jewish state, they're not just saying they're not going to accept Israel as a state. They're saying they're not going to accept any Jews in Israel, period. Right. So, I, so, the, so, yeah, so, the, so the question that, you know, so the question is, is that, you know, where, where do you begin a dialogue with somebody like that? Well, I think and you need their, to their sole purpose and, and purposes of life is your destruction, your death. I, I think what right. happens, what, why people hate is because people have ignorance. I think that there's groups like Seeds for Peace, which allow for Jews and Palestinians, Israelis and Palestinians to come together. And it's not perfect, but it's, it's a start. We need to. And where did they come together at? What well, land they, are they coming together at? Sometimes in America. It depends. There are certain okay. places, great spaces. But not in Gaza, right? Not in no, Gaza. See, that's so. the point no. that Eric is showing. See, that's the point well, that I, Eric I, is, I showed, is a, I showed a uh, video last week of a Jew, a family of Jews, a family, or maybe just two of them, made a wrong turn and ended up in the Gaza Strip. And oh, that didn't end well for them. Yeah, they, they were beaten. Their car set on fire and essentially had to get, had to send the IDF in there to rescue them and get them out of there. And they just, just by accident, oh, Jews are here. And th th this is the reaction. This is the visceral hatred that exists in that region. You Okay. Let, let's no, say wait, it, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I, 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 I do have to stand up for the Palestinians. Okay, in one aspect, you can go and Google this. It's called Hubadiah Street. Just, just YouTube it. Hubadiah Street. Okay, this is in um, Hebron. Okay, there is this small Jewish clan that took over this hotel. Supposedly they bought it, although they have no evidence that they bought this hotel. But either way, they occupied. It. This is going back to the 1950s. They occupied this hotel, um, and they brought in, you know family and blah, blah blah over the years but anyway they occupy this entire street it's called Ubadaya street okay and palace this is in palestinian controlled territory you know supposedly allegedly in the west bank well palestinians cannot walk down the street but they can't walk down the street for their own safety why? Because because Hubadaya Street, you know, it's in that mountainous region. So Hubadaya Street is on the top, okay, and and, and, and the streets underneath are, are, are lower. Because why? Because these Jewish kids, okay, of this strict ultra orthodox, these um 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 um, what do you call it? Um, oh, uh, Habadniks, okay, um, that don't join the military, don't join the army, whatever. Okay, they throw rocks at the Palestinians when they're just going to shop in, in, in the local shop, you know, shopping area. Okay, this is all documented. So now they're forbidden from walking. Not only that, but the Israelis, okay, uh, they have the Israeli army where they are assigned. There's an Israeli contingent army that is assigned to guard this small clan. I think they only occupy, uh, I, I think they're only probably not even a hundred at the most. Okay, I think they're I think they're around fifty. Anyway, when they go out to the Palestinian to, to the Palestinian markets, they've got to close everything down. Okay, and the and, and these soldiers, uh, one soldier per one Israeli soldier per 
um, Jewish settler, if you want to call it that, or, 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 or you know, occupier of uh, Hubadiah Street. One soldier per person. It's no joke. Think about the logistics of that. Guards, okay, the people that are going to shop, okay, or just walking down the street. They got videos where there's this soldier, okay, guarding this old woman walking on the street, okay, in in, in, in in Hebron, okay, where she is totally in, just insulting every Palestinian she sees, spitting on them. You know what I mean? But as soon as the Palestinian speaks up and says, hey, you're spitting on me, you old bat? Okay, no. Okay, that's when the Israeli soldier comes in and says, no, 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 stop this, continue on. You know what I mean? So, no, what I am saying is this. On, on that part, on that aspect, they are sowing the seeds of their own destruction, Okay. But I don't know why Israeli, Israel, Israel will tear up other settlements, but these numbskulls, they, they protect them. And I'm sorry, it's a waste of resources, and it's just stupid. Go on YouTube, Hubadai Street, and you're going to be like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Go check it out. Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I posted in chat there a link to uh, a YouTube channel. It's uh, called the, They're called the Israel Guys. And these are two Americans that they're over in Israel, and what they do is they report on current events there uh, in Israel. And it's 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 really a good, it's it's really an informative show. So if you ever get a chance to get over there, uh, uh, oh, oh, oh but by the way, a lot of the videos of Hubadiah Street, they're 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 pro the, the, the Jews of Hubadiah. So this isn't like th these are you know anti-Semite. Okay, you know what I mean? Okay, no, they're they're like promoting this. Like this is what we're doing. They're proud of it. I'm just saying, no, Hubadiah Street, go and Google it. It's, dude, it's stupid. It really is just stupid. Okay. Mm. Uh, it sounds to me like it ain't very intelligent, that's for sure. All right, let's uh let's let's finish this hamajama up. Okay, so the BDS uh movement did not start uh with this guy right here. The BDS movement started basically uh in nineteen thirty-five and thirty-eight. Um, but it, it does continue today. And here are some examples of this. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and belabor the point of going through all these things of what the Nazis did to the Jews as far as boycotting them and compare that to what the BDS movement does, but it's essentially the same thing. So whatever the Nazis did to the Jews, the BDS movement has essentially um, duplicated. All right, so let's make a conclusion here. Number one, all attempts for peace by Israel have either failed or have been, well, have either been rejected or uh, have failed. Um, it was obvious in Ariel Sharon's attempt with the land for peace and giving back the Gaza Strip uh, to the Palestinians. Uh, that did not work. That did not work out well for the Israelis at all. Why? Because just as soon as it was given back, they tore everything up, destroyed everything that was Jewish there, and then they started launch launching rockets and terrorist attacks against Jews. We also looked at Israel having a biblically mandated right to the land. According to the Bible, the covenant was made with Abraham. It was passed to Isaac, not Ishmael. Then it was given to Jacob. Jacob's 12 tribes, and then it was passed in the Mosaic Covenant, and then it, that Mosaic Covenant continued. It had nothing to do with Israel or uh, with uh, Ishmael. And then the legal right to their land, I showed you that Israel actually has a re legal right to the West Bank. Why? Jordan attacked Israel from that land. It has a legal right to the Gaza Strip. Why? Syria attacked Israel from that land. You lost. There are consequences to wars. You attack somebody and you lose. Don't go sniveling to anybody else about losing the land that you attacked your opponent from. Period. And the Bible tells us that we pay for the peace of uh, Jerusalem. <clears throat> okay. So we uh, recognize the Jewish state, Jerusalem, as being the undivided, now we do anyway, as being the undivided capital of Israel. And because we finally moved our embassy there, something that had been done or been trying amen, to get done amen, since amen. 1992. Who did that? Who did that? Donald <laughs> Trump. I'm the Trumpster saying. did that. All right. So, boy, that's uh, right at an hour and a half. I'm getting, I'm getting gooder at this, this job. Um, 
Okay. Oh, let, let, let me just add one thing because I do want to comment on. Well, this. I'm going to go around the horn, so you okay. go ahead okay. and start. Go ahead. Okay, I'll start. Okay, so so you you were bringing up you you brought up Adolf in the boys early on. Okay, I just want you to let you know you can go and get this book. I haven't got it yet, but I've read excerpts of it. It's um uh, Goebbels Goebbels diaries. Okay, they have been translated. Well, some of them have been translated. Okay, all right. No. <laughs> Here's the funny thing, Goebbels and all the others, and, and Adolf Hitler what was was in response to this. Well, he was having a positive response to this. He was going to resettle all the Jews in Europe, resettle them in Israel. This is no joke. He they were seriously considering it. Goebbels was a promoter of this. So was uh, Goring. They were promoting this. But what happened? Well. He sent that refugee boat, okay, all over the world, and, and then America sent it back. And then Adolf Hitler, according to Goebbels, in his diaries, said, everyone wants me to do this. It's no joke. This is according to Goebbels, okay? In his diaries, they were going to resettle the Jews in Israel. Hmm. But because of everybody sent this boat of refugees back to Germany to be killed, to be exterminated. And they weren't killing them fast enough. Exa yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Okay? I mean, they were they were literally going to resettle them in, in, in Palestine. And there's also other things, too. The uh, Germans needed the Arab oil, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? But, no, that, that was what they were planning on doing. Um, but, unfortunately, because, you know. Yeah, just let you know. But anyway, definitely um, Google, you guys, Google Hubadiah Street. I'll send you links, Eric. So when, when you watch it, you're going to be like, are you freaking kidding me? Hmm. <laughs> you know? I'm just sorry. I mean, yeah. Anyway. All right. I'm off. All righty. Uh, let's uh, jump over to John. John, did you have anything that you wanted to add tonight? No, no. Okay. Well, we I really appreciate you coming on tonight and uh, helping us out with a couple of those details uh that we might have missed uh all right connie connie islam equals death lady mm, she might have stepped away isa you have anything isa appears to have stepped away paul i think that if you're a parent and you're listening Somebody's to this there. Get your children, make them sit down and watch this entire thing. You know, and I would actually go to the point where I would test them on it to the point where they have to know this because their local schools will not teach this. That's important to understand. Your local schools will not teach you, teach your children what was just shown to you. That's that. Thank you, Eric. Well done. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Okay, well, we're going to call it a night. Uh, Darcy commented here saying that I'm sounding gooder. Uh, I'm feeling gooder, -er, not the goodest. I'm still having it's, it's just, it's just, it's just, gosh. avoid the vid. That's <laughs> to say it, avoid the vid. It just makes you feel miserable. Uh, but I am, I am feeling much better than I was. Uh, on, on Sunday, that's for sure. Okay, we're going to call it a night. Thank you, everybody uh, that came here in the panel, contributed. Oh, a couple admin things. Uh, I just got a message from Skype. Uh, our brother, Dr. Kugar Phobia, is going to be uh, debating a boss on the 29th of January, which they would. Why didn't I, I passed over you, Dr. Kufar? I'm sorry. Did you have anything that you wanted to add to this? I didn't. I, I'm oh, that's okay. No, I, I just wanted to say uh, it, it was an excellent show, and I agree with what Paul said. You got to teach your kids because this is not something that they're going to teach in school. And, yeah. yes, uh, me and the boss, we have agreed 1 p.m., not this Saturday because he's busy the following Saturday. Okay, that's a Saturday. Okay, good, good. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. Uh, I was going to is that a moderated debate or is that just going to be a conversation or what? Or? Well, I, I was hoping that we could do it on your show if possible. If not, I'll do it on mine. And I guess we could have a moderated. Three well, we could do it on mine, but you, you don't have four hours. No, I don't think I, I want to debate four hours. Right, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, if you want to do it, uh, let me know and we'll, we'll get it. We'll get the logistics of it. Uh, we'll get the logistics of it set up. That, that's that's perfectly fine by me. 
Yeah, uh, I would love to, I'd good. love to hear that. Um, it, and it, well, anyway, we've, we've heard all the, uh, the majority of the arguments for uh, Muhammad in the Bible also. Um, okay. Also, uh, Chris Claus uh, has assured me that he is going to be having a show this Thursday evening uh, at, I think it was 8 p.m. Eastern time, so it'll be right at the yeah. end of Paul's show. What? Where, where, where is Chris? He's kind of like been MIA for a while. Well, well he's, he's, he's working he, a different shift. Yeah, he, 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 like, he got uh, he, Tommy, he's he's going off to Cuba too, man. I know. He's, well, what he's doing, I think he's, I said he was leaving Friday or Saturday. I mean, he's. I think he yeah. said Friday. Yeah, okay, so he's going to. Uh, oh, but by the way, just a correction. It's in uh, it's in Hebron, and it's Romala Street or King David Street, Street Shooter Street. I'm sorry, Shooter Street, King David Street in um, Hebron. I'll send you the links to the videos. No, you're gonna mm -hmm. be like seriously. You watch these. You're gonna be like, are you freaking kidding me? No, kill that old bat. I'm just saying. Any old bat spits on me. No, I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of that. Okay, Windhill. I don't know. Uh, I want to debate you on this topic of this show, whether or not Israel, the Jews have a right to the land. OK, that's, that's, that's kind of silly because you just proved using historical documents and stuff. So well, he says, no, silly he, said, top, silly uh, debate. he says my sheets won't help me. I don't know what he means by my sheets Their not sheets. helping me. My <laughs> history PowerPoint. won't help you. <laughs> well, I mean, that. Uh, send me an e email and we'll work something out. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mods in, uh, in the chat, everybody in the chat, thank you for coming today and uh, enduring this. I saw there's a lot, of course, there's always, you guys are always really active in there and I try to keep, I try to keep up, but at the same time, when I'm trying to read what you're saying here and listening, I'm not a good multitasker, obviously. But I, I do appreciate you all coming and uh, spending your uh, Tuesday evening with me, especially when the Shimonian uh, was on tonight. So God bless you. And we will see you on Sunday here in the Cross of the Crescent discussion group. God bless. God bless.